Hello, my name is Curtis Eckerman, and today I'm going to show you how to use the iNaturalist app. Uh, please look at the previous video on uh, Seek, how to use it separately. But uh, I want to start by saying that um, Seek and iNaturalist apps are both made by iNaturalist. And uh, I discussed some of the differences before, but again, Seek is geared towards younger observers, but it has a really nice feature of a recognition software that will help to identify organisms whereas iNaturalist is more of an interface to the actual website of iNaturalist and so we're going to uh, uh, see how that works with iNaturalist while it does not have the recognition software it does have a number of features that Seek does not and can be very useful in managing your iNaturalist account uh, and your observations so as before, you can find both iNaturalist and Seek as apps in the Google Play Store or iTunes or wherever you get your apps. And it's usable on all of the platform, the smart device platforms. And so uh, you would go there to download it first and then you would click on it to start your um, experience with the app. So let's do that. I'm going to click on iNaturalist. And the first thing it'll do is come up with an, uh, a login page now, once you've logged in once, you won't. This will not show up again, and uh, you can log in in the way that you have before. You can sign up here. Um, I recommend that you go do it on the website first because you have more options to change your profile and, and information, uh, and set things like your licensing uh, pr uh, preferences for your photos. But um, here, I'm going to log in because I, ma I made an account using my great grandmother's um, name and we're going to set her up as a brand new account or we did set her up as a brand new account and so let's sign her in here and so I'm going to log in with email I'm going to use her username Talitha M and I'm going to use the password that I set for her and this will be this again the same password that you used to make your account originally let's log in and you can see that this is a brand new account. There are no observations, no species, and no identifications made here. Now this interface looks quite a bit different than um, the Seek one, and that's because it looks more similar to the iNaturalist um, uh, uh, interface itself the, on the website. There are a number of things that you can do here, um, but we're gonna start with the basics with regards to taking a picture or making an observation. And right off the bat, the, the, the green circle with the cross, uh, the plus sign in it on the bottom right is going to be your um, uh, access to taking an image. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. I, I have different options here. If I have a bunch of images that I already took off my phone without using the app, I can actually upload those, upload those into iNaturalist by using Choose Image. I can take a photo, or I can even record a sound. Sound is another acceptable observation type in iNaturalist. Say you're listening to uh, uh, frogs in the evening and you want to know what those are, or uh, you're hearing a bird call nearby, you can record those sounds and enter those as observations as well. But I'm going to take a photo. I'm going to click on photo, the green photo. OK, and I had to reverse the angle of my phone. Here is a moth. And this is the same moth image that we were looking at in Seek. But you'll notice right away that it's different in the sense that it's not trying to identify it right off the bat. And so that's one of the disadvantages of using the iNaturalist app as compared to Seek. But really, that's the only downside. Um, other than this, iNatu the iNaturalist app has a lot more uh, functionality, as we will see. So let's go ahead and take a picture of this moth. It's going to be our observation. I'm going to click the white circle in the bottom center, and I'm going to take a picture. Now it gives me an option to retry the picture. Maybe I got it. Maybe it was a little too blurry. I want to retry it, or I can hit OK. I'm going to hit OK in this case. And one of the nice things about what's happening is that it's currently finding the location using the phone information of, of its location. And so uh, when, you're taking, when you're out on a hike and you're taking photos of insects and worms and snakes and things that you run across, it's going to automatically try to upda update and upload the date, and the time, and the location of that particular photo based on where your phone is. 
That's why you should turn on the location information for your phone. I can also add notes to this particular observation, but before we get there, if you'll notice at the top, I see the image of the moth that I just took, and I see to the left of that a camera with a plus sign. I can add another image. Keep in mind that many observations may require several uh, pictures. Maybe I need to get it at different angles. Maybe I need to take a picture of the top of the mushroom and the bottom of the mushroom. Uh, and so I can do that. So in this case, maybe I want to get a picture of the side of the moth. And so I can click on that great that that camera with the plus sign next to my image, and it'll bring up uh, another option to take a photo. <coughs> I'll do that and switch my camera here again. And now I can go say to the side of the of the the organism. And I'm I kind of like that. I'm going to hit take a picture and it's going to add it to it and it'll give and I'm going to say okay, hit okay and there it is I now have two pictures now I can change the order of those pictures which one is showing first I'm going to leave the one with the green check mark below it as my first image I can um, then ask for an ID ID even though it did not utilize the initial um, recognition software to try to recognize the organism it will do it here in the section with the question mark with the box around it it says what did you see if you click on that it's going to attempt to use the image that you made to make an identification and so in this case uh, it's saying it's pretty sure that it's in the genus Hylis um, and, uh, and and his top 10 suggestions include white line sphinx if you'll recall from seek uh, it said it was pretty sure that it was white line sphinx. So now if you knew that you could just click on white line sphinx But maybe I'm not completely sure. Maybe some of those sphinx moths look a lot very similar to me I'm just going to click on the genus Hylis and I'm going to click on the check mark here and It'll add that as my identification and so I, I've made a decent identification now keep in mind that um, this doesn't that there's going to be problems with this sometimes for instance I'm going to take this off I'm going to click on that again in this case this moth is pretty distinctive and it's telling us that it's pretty sure it's in this genus but many in many cases the observation will not have a selection for pretty sure it's just going to have top 10 suggestions and sometimes those suggestions are really far off and that's because maybe the species is fairly rare and there's not a lot of information locally about it in terms of facial recognition or, or organismal recognition uh, it may be that you didn't get a very good image of it there's lots of reasons why it will not be able to identify it all the way down to species so I always like to choose the uh, options for pretty sure where it says we're pretty sure and then if it uh, if I doesn't have that then I'll sometimes I'll choose what I think are good options from the suggestions or sometimes I'll just put what I know so for instance in this case maybe I'm not familiar with uh, moths but I at least know it's a moth and that's what I would put I would put in moth so in this case I'm gonna go back and check on the genus because it's saying it's pretty sure I can add notes I click on the notes and then I can start adding notes let me move it up here I can say uh, uh, this is part of my collection is part of my collection okay so I'm gonna leave it at that I'm gonna go ahead and click on the check mark to enter that information oh I when I clicked on the check mark it actually updated the uh, it submitted the observation I didn't mean to do that but this is a good time to show um, how to edit a particular observation so you can see right now it's uploading this observation and it's uploading it into iNaturalist but there's a problem with this observation and and let's go ahead and it's now showing one observation I'm gonna go click on that observation and the problem I have with this observation is that this is actually not the right uh, date or location this particular moth was actually collected in Iowa and it was collected in 2011 and so I just have this particular uh, moth as a picture so I want to change that because I don't want the date and time and location to reflect when I took the picture or where I took the picture if it's not appropriate for where the organism was actually found I want the date and time that it was collected or, or observed and where it was actually observed in the wild so I'm going to edit this and the way to do that 
is go to the top right. You see the pencil icon, top right. I'm going to click on that. It's going to take me to this page of my observation, and I can go edit that. So now I'm just going to make up a date here um, just for pur purposes of illustration. I'm going to click on the date um, information. It's going to, it, I can look for uh, a different date. I'm going to use this calendar. I think I can click on the, well, I may have to, oh, there we go. I, I clicked on the, the year at the top of this little box and I can select the year. It was 2011. And I'm just going to say for argument's sake that it was August 1st. And then I hit OK. And so it updated that um, time, that date. The time is not as important. Yes, if you have the exact time, that's great. <clears throat> but the date is more important than the time. Primarily because that date tells us something about seasonality um, of activity. Now for the location, I'm going to click on where it says the States of Bowerly Ranch. I'm going to click on the icon next to that to change the location. And or I can click on the, the name itself. Now currently it's showing where it says where it thinks this observation is. But in fact, this is a map and I can zoom out or I can search. I know this was actually taken near Jewel, Iowa. And so I'm going to type in. Um, and it sh shows, uh, oops, not jewelries, jewel. And it'll give me options if I scroll down. Let's see, jewel. Sometimes. There we go. The third option, jewel, Iowa. I'm going to click on that, and it takes me to jewel. I used to live here long ago, and it's somewhere around there. And so I have the crosshairs basically show where it is. And I'm going to use the check mark. See where it says now it shows the location um, at the top, jewel, Iowa. I'm going to click on the check mark and it now will update that location. So I now I have a, uh, a, a the correct location and the correct date and um, that's good enough for me for this particular observation. I'm going to hit the check mark at the bottom to update this and now I have more accurate information on the location and the date of this particular observation. And so I've now made an observation. Now what's going to happen is something, and it's something that um, I'll discuss in a later video with how to uh, 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 interact with with uh, observations, is that people will interact with it. In fact, it looks like somebody has, uh, maybe, I mean, let me go, oh, here we go. Yeah, in fact, here we have, I haven't had this observation on more than 30 seconds, and you can see that uh, Ag Aguilita, as she's someone who is uh, very active in iNaturalist, has already confirmed that this is the genus, not only the genus, but it's the species white lined sphinx. And even in here in the app, I can agree with that and I get a nice, um, and now I'm, it's going to turn to research grade, something that I'll discuss later. But this is how the community interacts with us. As soon as I entered this or added this online, it now becomes available for other people to observe. Um, and to uh, interact with. And th so that's a nice demonstration of how quickly that can happen. Um, some organisms, it happens very fast. Uh, large insects, uh, birds, mammals, snakes, frogs, lizards. Other organisms, it may take months, sometimes years, before someone really interacts with it because they're just really difficult. Things like uh, mushrooms can be very difficult and things like uh, uh, s very small insects. There's a group of moths called the micro moths. They're exceedingly difficult to identify, uh, for instance. So uh, it's all going to depend on the, on the quality of the photo, the quality of your observation, um, and how much is known about that particular group that will determine how quickly an observation can often be identified. It also depends largely on the community itself. Who are the experts? Are they on a naturalist? Are they active? Are they seeing your observation? Those are all factors that play a role here. So there are many other things that you can do in the iNaturalist app. You can use, and I, what I did is I clicked on the, the three lines at the top left of this, clicked on that, and it opened up my um, um, menu essentially. Uh, there are guides, there's projects, uh, you can do messages here. Don't worry about those things for now as you're getting started. If you become an avid user of iNaturalist, which I hope you do, those are going to be things that you're going to look into later. And, uh, uh, thing, and then, of course, the one that you would also use is the Explore at the very top. Explore will allow you to go and observe and look at things um, based on your interests. Maybe uh, right now it's showing 
all the observations for a particular group uh, at my location. And so I can start to uh, limit that. I'm going to hit the search button. I want to look for mammals at my location. And I'm going to hit the magnifying glass. And it's going to show me the different kinds of mammal observations that are found here around this particular area around Austin, for instance. So uh, that's a good example of how you can also use this to explore information that's not your own. Anyway, that's a rundown on how the iNaturalist app works. And you'll find that it has a number of features that are very similar to the website. However, I would tell you that the website itself, if you have access to a desktop or a laptop to access the, the website, that there's even more features there. And, and it's a little bit better interface because you have a bigger screen and things like that. So uh, I would recommend that uh, you try out Seek first, especially if you are not familiar with iNaturalist or organisms very much. Maybe um, uh, graduate to using the iNaturalist app, and then you may, not you may decide that you don't want to use either one of those down the road. I'll tell you personally that I don't use either one of these myself. Instead, what I do is I take large numbers of photos with my phone and a camera, and then I upload those to my desktop and then download those into iNaturalist, the website. It's not uncommon for me to take a hike, for instance, in the afternoon, and take anywhere from 50 to 150 photos. And so I take my time to sort through those photos because I take a, maybe more photos than I need. I sort through the photos. Sometimes I'll edit them to crop them to show what I want them to show. And then I will upload them directly into the website itself. So many different ways of getting observations into iNaturalist and many different ways of interacting with iNaturalist itself. And this is just another one of those ways. And you're going to have to find out for yourself which one is most appropriate for you.